my name is Amy Pennington. I am an interviewer for the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. I am interviewing Mr. Edward J. Kroc. Yes, ma'am. On August 3rd, 2006, at the Miami Township Branch Library. Thank you for joining us. Um, could you tell us how to spell your last name for the record, and could you tell us your birthday, please? My birthday? Mm -hmm. 9921. And what about my name? Just how to, how to spell your last name? K R A U K. Okay, great. And what, uh, you were in World War II? You were in World War II? World War II. And can you tell us the uh, branch of service you were in? I went into the U.S. Army. <coughs> and uh, that's before the Air Force was around, so it didn't end up. Then it ended up, it was the U.S. Army Air Force. And what was your rank? Uh, high technical sergeant. And uh, where did you serve? Uh, uh, in Corsica and Italy, overseas. Okay. I spent two years there in a stage training. You could tell us a little bit about that if you want. Uh, Goldsboro, North Carolina. Santa Monica, California, Fort Myers, Florida for Gunner School, and Laredo, Texas, and uh, I went somewhere for a mechanic school, <laughs> I forget what that was, and uh, Greenville, South Carolina for the training with the B-25. B-25. Were you drafted or did you enlist? They uh, sent me a notice by being drafted, so I stopped, I run down and I said, I don't want to be drafted, and I want to join the Navy. But they wouldn't take me because I was colorblind. So I come home, and I told my neighbor about it, a friend. So he and I went down and over Fort Thomas and joined the Army. <laughs> he took us there. What were your first days in the service like? First day? First days. Uh, the first two weeks was in Fort Thomas in KP. <laughs> but then we had our training, so it then went from there. But, so. Did you, what did it feel like to be, at the beginning, what did it feel like to be in the service? In the service? Well, I didn't have much attention because we were awful busy. <laughs> What kind of things did you have to do? Uh, like I say, with air, air mechanic school, most of them schooling, and gunnery school. And what was your job assignment when you went to, when did you go to Italy, and what was your job assignment there? I was, uh, I trained with this crew in Greenville, South Carolina, and I was, uh, Top, uh, top turret gunner. There were six of us on the plane. And on our last mission, last training flight, we had a load of 100 pound practice bombs. We took off and one of the engines caught on fire. So the pilot shut the engine down and they got a system where you it put the fire out, but kept losing altitude. So he called the uh, tower and said they told him to restart the engine. Maybe he can get a little altitude and come back to to the field. But when he did that, he forgot to, that CO2 was only good for one time to put the fire out. Well, it caught fire again. See? So. Ended up and the pilot lay, set her down on the belly, down in the field, and all six of us got out of it. That's a, that's a graduation flight. <laughs> that was something. Uh, tell me about a couple of your most memorable, exper memorable experiences. That was one of them. That was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one was, we got a brand new B-25, and. Savannah, Georgia. So we took it up for a test hop to get familiar with it. 
and there was a uh, little smoke coming out in the middle of the plane. There was a, like a uh, generator, alternator, had a short in it, and the uh, little switch kicked off. All it was doing was smoking. Pilots in that smoke it says, Pilot the crew, prepare to bail out. Right over Savannah, Georgia. Of course, he was after crash landing one time and having this smoke, he wasn't taking any chances. But we talked him into it. We, me and the co pilot, talked to him. He landed and, and they come up and picked us up. And that pilot, his name was McLaughlin, from down in Texas, flying guy. He went to the fly surgeon and says, I quit flying. He wouldn't take the responsibility of a crew. So there we were. He was gone. We had to wait for a new pilot. Never seen him first time. It's all right. Turned out he, he was one of our regulars. Do you recall any kind of any uh, particularly unusual event? Uh, well, we flew down through, uh, going overseas, down through Central America, over to Brazil, over to the Ascension Island, then over to Africa. So when we got to Africa, the weather was bad, so they sent us up the coast. And uh, there was an old Pan American Airways station there with a short runway. So the pilot, he spotted it, set her down, and he was downwind. You never go downwind because you don't pick up any resistance. Well, anyhow, we downwind, we passed the tire and haven't touched the ground, and finally we touched the ground, and over in the runway we went, up, <laughs> up in the desert like. But everything worked out all right. <laughs> what was your job in Africa? What did you guys, what, did you fly a certain, certain well, we supplies We just went over there? there going over where they needed us over in Corsica. Okay. See? What did you do in Corsica? Can you tell us more about what your jobs were there? And That's the same thing, just flying, that's about all. Did you fly supplies in or did you? Ma'am? Did you fly supplies in or were you like a fighter pilot or? Private. Fi a fighter pilot, did you? No, uh, I was just an uh, engineer gunner. Engineer gunner. Yeah. Uh, that flew five meshes as a tail gunner and 65 as a top third gunner. What were those like? Those days? Yeah, what were uh, those days like? Well, tail gunner is real nice because you're on your knees. You got armor plating on the floor, armor plating on the side. Armor plate behind the door. Only thing is opened up here at the top, so you're pretty, pretty safe there. <laughs> did you have? Uh, did you make a lot of friends while you were in service? Oh yes, I belonged to a organization they they brought up after the war. They called the 57 Bomb League. It's the men and the women from the World War II. And we still get together. Now, how did you stay in touch with your family when you were in the service? Just by letters. Just letters. Know. Did it take a long time for the letters to Not go back really. and forth? Uh -uh. What was the food like? It was good. We have to have good food. Because when you're flying, you're <laughs> you got to have good food, yeah. Did you have plenty of supplies? Have what? Did you have plenty of supplies? Supplies? Oh, yes. That's something I'll never understand, how this country could, it could bring all the fuel that them planes burned. Like here is how you just see a gas station, but you got all these planes coming, and they use a lot of gasoline. Well, 
what, what did it feel like when you uh, arrived in Corsica? Did you get to look around at all? Oh, yeah. Did you get to visit? And did you stay there long? I was there about seven months, I guess. Seven months. Yeah. My uh, radio man and I run across an old German sickle. Junkyard-like, mm -hmm. so we took it and worked on it. And finally, got it running <laughs> and got our gasoline from the <coughs> for nothing because <laughs> you couldn't buy it. So we got to ride around Corsica in our sickle, which was kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. Did you meet? What did you think of Italy in general? Uh, uh, well, I, uh, one day I had a, a leave, a 10 day leave, and went to, to Rome. And one of the fellows said, let's go see the, the cathedral. I said, okay, we went over. And, and it just happened that the Pope was talking to the soldiers. So it was Pope Pius XII. I sat down, I was like I'm sitting by you, and shook hands with him, and wow. he says, uh, you English? I said, no, I said, I'm American. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's something I'll never forget. Tell us a little more about that. What did he say to the... I thought he didn't say much more because they, everybody's in line seeing him. <laughs> so, he, he, did he make any speeches at, no, at the same time? No, just, just meeting people? All the fellows in line, waiting to sit down, say hi, and go on your way, take turns. That's, that's really interesting. Um, when you, you said you had a lot of friends, did you all play a lot of pranks on each other? Did you have a lot of fun with, you know, just goofing around ever? Oh, well, not too much. Not too much. Uh, well, another loop we had went to uh, the Isle of Capri, which was really nice. What was that like? Oh, yeah. We just had a good time there. That's all. Had whatever you want to drink and eat. Nice little island. So you got to you got to sometimes have some some time free to yourself and to relax. Oh yeah, a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, I see that you have a lot of medals. Yeah. Can you tell us about uh, some of the medals that you got? Well, these are just where I've been. Uh, you want to hold them up to me? I have to read it. You can read them. This is uh, the um, medal set for the Army of Occupation, if you want to hold them yeah. up. I don't really pay too much attention to that. I just had them down in, in the drawer. But. Can you tell us about this one, if you want to hold it up for the camera? Okay. That's the Distinguished Flying Cross. When were you awarded that one? Toward the end of your service, or? It happened on a mission, on our 60th mission, February 25th, 1945. We got shot up real bad, and, and the, the fuel line was cut in two in the Bombay, and me being up in the up top turret, the fumes kept, were all over the plane. So I got down and there's a little crawlway with a hole in, just big enough for a person to get through and look down there and I seen all that gasoline. So I didn't know what to do or what's going on. So I took a first aid kit and went down in there head first. And I found a line about that big around. I just took the gauze and tape and taped it up. I couldn't see it, and gasoline. And I finally got to slow down, see. So went back up and told the pilot about it. And I said, we better not smoke on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it all the way back, see. 
And then that's how I got that. That's wonderful. What about this one here? And this is air metal. I got that and with six oak leaf clusters. Each one of them means another mission. That's seven missions that weren't easy missions. They were tough missions. That's why they give you that. Can you tell us about those missions? Oh, what I don't know do? too much about that. I don't remember them hardly. <laughs> <laughs> and this one? Uh, Oh, my niece got an application, and she got to put all this information down and sent it into the Ohio Military Hall of Fame, and they accepted me right away. So we went up there a year ago last June. That's June the 14th, and got that presented. So I, I was pretty happy, so it was nice. That's wonderful. <laughs> what, do you recall um, any, anything that you want to tell us about, particularly for this interview? No, I don't think so. I think that ought to be enough. <laughs> Well, what were your days like when the when the service ended? What was your career? When did you? When I come home? Yes, when you came home. What did, what did you do? Well, before I went to service, I worked for my brother-in-law down Cleves here in the gas station. So when I come back, uh, he bought, a, bought the station back up and uh, started it up again. Then uh, after a couple of years, I bought the place from him and sold gas for 29 cents. <laughs> so I made, I was there for about 30 years. I made a halfway decent living. I had two kids and put them through school. So. How do you think your service, your years in the service and the experiences that you had in the service affected your life? Well, you can't, you can't forget your time in the service, and especially the friends you made, and, and it, it still goes on. One thing that happened one time, there's Floyd Whiteford that lived in Cleese. He was in Africa. He was on this B-25 out there. He was in Africa, served his time, and come home. And about that time, I was ready to go overseas. And they sent me to the 12th Air Force, where he was, 321st Bomb Ring, where he was, 445th Squadron, the same identical place that he left. And we, after the war, we belonged to this association, and he belonged to it. And we lived two doors away on Jackson Drive. <laughs> so, I'll never forget That's that. That's quite a coincidence. Do you attend, so you attend reunions and things like that? I have, but I, just not anymore. We, they were all over the United States, east, west, north, and south, all over. And are you active in the veterans organizations? No, just the American Legion and VFW, yes. Okay. I just belong to them, but I'm not active. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Oh, I think that's enough. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for interviewing with us today. Uh, it's well, thank been, you. It's been an honor.